Let's configure the AnyConnect Umbrella Roaming Module with Trusted Network Detection. So we're going to start in our Umbrella Console, and the only thing we need to do here is download a particular piece of configuration. It's a JSON file that configures the Umbrella Roaming Module for AnyConnect. So to do that after login, I'll go to Deployments, Roaming Computers, and then in the upper right, I have this roaming client download. I'll scroll down a bit since I've zoomed in here. You'll see there's a couple of agent downloads here. Now, this is to download the standalone, what we call enterprise roaming client, which is not part of any connect. This is meant for customers that are using the roaming client without any connect or perhaps with another vendor's VPN tool, et cetera. But we are going to integrate any connect. So we want to download the module profile. And this is a very small JSON file you see here that I have downloaded. Now, let's perform the rest of the configuration in ASDM, or Active Security Device Manager. This is the GUI that's built into the ASA firewall. Now, I'm going to start with a device that's already been configured for basic VPN connectivity. So the device is bootstrapped, IP addresses, routing, and so on. And I have a configured AnyConnect connection profile. I'm using just the built-in one, what's called the default web VPN group. Most customers would create a custom connection profile, but I already have this working the way I want it. And the only thing I want to do now is add on the umbrella roaming client. So there's two things I need to do to enable this. The first is to configure what's called an AnyConnect client profile for the umbrella roaming module. So you'll see I have a AnyConnect VPN profile here, which we'll get to in a bit. But for now, let's add an umbrella profile. So add and go down to umbrella roaming security profile. I'll give it a name. I'll just call it umbrella. And I need to upload that JSON file that I downloaded a few minutes ago. So I'll click upload. Browse local files. There's my org info.json upload file. Okay, so now I have my uh, file uploaded and I need to assign this to a group policy. And again, typically you would create a custom group policy for your VPN profile. I'm just using the default one here. This linkage here is important because if I don't choose this group policy, when a user connects and is assigned this group policy, they won't end up getting this umbrella security profile pushed down to them. So it's pretty important. So all set there and I'll click the OK button and then apply. All right. So at this point, if a user connects in on that connection profile that is assigned to this default group policy, this umbrella roaming security profile will be pushed down to them, by the way, in addition to this uh, roaming user VPN profile, because it's also assigned to the same group policy. Now, there's one more thing I need to do, because the act of just assigning this umbrella roaming security profile will push down this JSON settings file to umbrella, but it won't actually push down the umbrella software module for any connect. To do that, we have to go into our group policies. And again, I only have one here. And editing that, I'll go into my settings for AnyConnect. And I can choose which modules I want pushed down to AnyConnect when a user is assigned this group policy. So you can see our client profiles to download because we assign those in the AnyConnect client profile configuration. And if I forgot to do it there, I could do it here. But now we have our optional client modules to download it. I want to push down Umbrella. So when a user connects with the AnyConnect Secure Mobility Client, that will ensure that the Umbrella roaming module also gets pushed down to them. So I can choose any modules I want to push down. I will often pick Dart, which is the diagnostic module, by the way. But let's just stick with the AnyConnect Umbrella roaming security module. Click OK. And uh, you see it in the field here. And now when I save this, that will ensure that whenever a VPN user connects in, is assigned this profile, they'll get that umbrella roaming module pushed down. And because I have the AnyConnect client profile called umbrella, 
also assigned to that default group policy that will likewise make sure that the actual policy that ties that user to my umbrella organization will also get pushed down. And believe it or not, we're done. That will complete all the configuration for umbrella roaming. However, I do want to make sure that when that user takes their laptop into our office environment, I want the umbrella roaming module to not run. I, I want it to basically go into a, a wait mode, a sleep mode, if you will, because I want my on-premises firewall and DNS policies to take effect. So that brings us to the trusted network detection capability. Now, we'll point out if the corporate network is running what are called umbrella virtual appliances, the DNS servers that you can download and install for free from your umbrella portal, the client is smart enough to detect those already and will defer to those based upon a checkbox setting in your umbrella portal. But I'm going to take it one step further. Whenever the client is brought into my corporate environment, I don't want this umbrella roaming module to load. So to do that, I need to configure trusted network detection, and that is configured inside of a VPN profile. Now I've configured one here. I'll edit it and just show you the couple things that I've done. Namely, what we need to do to configure the trusted network detection is go to our part two of our preferences and if we scroll down, we can enable this automatic VPN policy. Now the settings you have here tell on AnyConnect what to do when it is on a trusted network, in which case I want it to disconnect and what to do if it's on an untrusted network. Now, the default setting here is to automatically connect. This can be quite handy, especially if you view something like certificates for authentication, because as a, the device enters and leaves a corporate network, it will automatically bring up the VPN, for example, when the device is brought home and, and gets on the user's home internet. However, if you're not using certificates, that means that whenever that device detects an internet connection that's not the corporate environment, it's going to attempt a any connect connection and prompt for credentials, which can be a bit annoying if you don't actually want to bring up the VPN. So I'll choose do nothing for this untrusted policy. Now, this gets to our settings to teach any connect how to know if it's connected to the corporate network. And what you're meant to do here is put in your trusted domain. So I have my fictitious company here that I'll put in my internal domain name and any connect will detect if it gets this DNS domain name assigned to it by DHCP. And the other thing that you're meant to do here is put in your DNS servers, your server IP addresses that would be assigned on the corporate network. Now, for many customers, this can be a huge list of DNS servers, which makes this particular method of uh, training trusted network detection a bit impractical. Uh, and for those environments, we offer the, another option, and this is the trusted servers configuration. And as you can see, this does need to be HTTPS, but the idea here is you can put in some FQDNs or IP addresses of some internal web servers in the organization. And of course, the idea here is these would be servers that are not accessible outside of the trusted network. And any connect will attempt to reach out to these servers and they'll actually match the certificate hash for the TLS certificate to make sure it's not being spoofed. And this is a more elegant way or sophisticated way to detect a trusted network without potentially having to put a gigantic list of DNS servers. In my case, I only have two, so no big deal. I'm just going to configure those two. And I'm done with trusted network uh, detection. Now in our roaming computers section on the umbrella dashboard, I can see the roaming computer settings for both the enterprise roaming client, which would be this middle section here, and then settings that are common to either the enterprise roaming client or the AnyConnect umbrella roaming module. So the ones that are important here, this first setting will disable DNS redirection whenever the roaming module or the enterprise client detects it's on an umbrella protected network. Now, this may not necessarily be protecting this client with my umbrella policy, so I like to leave that one off. The other settings that are pretty important down here are the respect AnyConnect trusted network detection. 
as well as disable roaming client while full tunnel is established. So the first one, of course, will tell any connect that will tell the roaming module to turn itself off if it's on a trusted network um, based upon that trusted network detection. And this setting obviously will also tell the roaming module to disable itself whenever there's a full VPN tunnel up, which is effectively similar to a trusted network detection capability there. I also like to tell it to automatically update itself and enable IPv6 redirection as well. It's time to test AnyConnect in the Umbrella Roaming Client. Now, the first thing I like to do is just validate that I am not behind an Umbrella protected network already. And we can do this by going to welcome.umbrella.com and you'll get this red air message that uh, lets you know that you're not being protected by Umbrella. If you are, you'll get a, a different message with a green background. Uh, so I'd like to get that out of the way just for uh, troubleshooting purposes. Now I'll go ahead and connect to my ASA head end. And when I put in my credentials, we'll see that uh, immediately the AnyConnect downloader will start. And since I've told the ASA to push down that module, that's been downloaded to me along with that umbrella profile. Now AnyConnect is connected. I'll go ahead and bring that back up. And we can see that I'm connected to my VPN head end. And it took a minute there, if you caught it, but the umbrella roaming module is now active. Uh, and the green means I'm being protected. Now, if I go back to my test site here and just, uh, we'll see. Now I am being protected by Umbrella, so everything is working just fine. And in this instance, disconnecting the VPN, you'll see that my roaming security will also remain active because I'm not on the trusted network. Now, if I move this device over to the trusted network, I'll get a different behavior. I've moved my test client off of the internet connection it was on and moved it onto my internal network. And now we can see that VPN has detected it as on a trusted network. So our trusted network detection settings that we put in place earlier are working. Now you'll see for roaming security, it still shows umbrella is active, but as we explained earlier, trusted network detection should have shut that off. But what umbrella is actually telling you here is that we're still being protected by umbrella it's just not using the roaming client services anymore. We can validate that by going into the AnyConnect details screen and clicking on roaming security. And we can see here our IPv4 DNS protection status says protected virtual appliance. And that means because we're behind that private network and we happen to be behind a umbrella virtual appliance here. So in this case, our enforcement status is being provided by that virtual appliance. DNS encryption is off because we're not using the umbrella roaming module capabilities and we don't have IPv4 enforcement uh, enabled in this setting as well. So trusted network detection working properly and our roaming client working properly when we're on network by disabling itself.